Hey guys, Oscar here for poppydaddy.com, also not a grouch. I want to show you today a tutorial on how to add a survey form or a feedback form to your website. In this case, I'm going to create a form that allows me to collect feedback after I give it a uh, workshop. So it's going to be very simple. We're going to have name and email. Let me take this off. We're going to have name and email. Um, uh, a selector where they can pick pick which session they're giving feedback about and um, a small section to give feedback and maybe a rating between you know one through ten we could get fancy with it but we're gonna keep this one simple just so you understand how to make the form it's also gonna be a two-page form so that people fill in their name and their email first and then continue on to page number two to complete the form this tends to generate good conversions because it feels like it's a shorter form and once they commit their name and email they're kind of committed to finishing the form so um, let's get started you need gravity form for this and I believe you need the top level edition to have all the add-ons that I have and we're going to talk about basically um, how to create the form next once you install gravity forms you will see forms right here we're going to go to new form and this is what you get um, I've already given it a name, so when you first create it, you will have a pop-up that asks you for a name and description. That's the name I gave this, and the description will come into play later on. Notice one of the great things about Gravity Forms is that it's has, it has a built-in mini tutorial system right here. It tells you what to do next. It points out to the next step, step number one. Then, you know, use this box right here to add a field, any field, don't be shy. So if we click on the standard fields over here, the moment we click on this, it's going to be added over here. Very cool, and then we can edit each field. It's really, really good if you go through this tutorial before you hit one of those buttons. Once you hit those buttons, this tutorial disappears. So, uh, it's really good to go through it. It's one, two, three, four steps. In fact, you could quit watching my video right now and go do that. Uh, if you need to know where to find this plugin, just look in the description below in the in the video, or wherever you're watching this. This should be a link to um, somewhere somewhere right here on the screen. Follow that link, type it, pause the video, type it into your browser. It will take you directly to the form that you need or to the plugin that you need. Uh, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add the name and email fields. And notice they are not here. We're going to look in the advanced fields section and we see that there's a name and an email address which is exactly what we wanted so we click on name notice we get a new field on the left hand side and email that's it that's all we need for now now one other thing that seems to be a problem for some people or tends to reduce conversions on your form is the name having first name and last name it is recommended that you put that into just one field and especially in my case I know everybody that attended so even if they just do their name I will know who it is and for the other purposes if we wanted to add this to an email list for example we can send the name in its entirety to Aweber and Aweber will be able to split it into first name and last name and does a pretty good job so if we can sacrifice the one field for an exchange of more, more conversions then that's a good thing so to do that we go to name format under the name field under the properties we're going to go to simple mode instead of normal notice this becomes one field only we're also going to say that the name is required so you just check that box the email is also required and um, that's it now this is the first section of the form that we wanted to fill out. So down here somewhere we're going to look for a special field that allows us to break this into another page and it's called a page break right here. So we click on page break and it gets added right here. And you also get that mini, mini tutorial system again. And it tells you right here, begin from, this is the top of the first page of the form and then the page ends right here and it explains that this is the top of the next page and the last page ends right here you could create multiple pages if you wanted like if you wanted to or needed to do a long survey you could do it this way 
but we're just going to now add the feedback form next, which will be one paragraph text box and one drop down selector box. In the form, we're going to um, notice that I can just drag those forms up and down. That's how you create a gravity form. Oop. That's how you customize your form. Oop. I think I went too, too high on title. We want it down here. There you go. So this here, we're going to turn it into the drop down boxes or yeah, drop down box for people to select which class they're giving feedback to or feedback about. First, let's just update our form so we can have a preview of the form. To do a preview is very simple. You can do a simple preview right here. Just click on preview and a new page pops up and you see a, a very rud rudimentary looking form and it doesn't show any of your website or the themes or how it's going to look on the end, but at least it shows you the functionality. So right here you see that there's a progress bar and then name and email. Uh, a description of that, this is the description that you selected or that you typed in when you first created the, the form. So what we're going to do here is show you how to customize some of those settings. If we go to form settings, click here, and we are looking for that multiple page page section where um, we don't want to show that form or the progress. Maybe it's on the settings of the page break itself. Let's go look, look really quick. Let's see. There you go. So at the very beginning of the page break, you will find that there's properties. And this is where you can say steps or none. So we're just going to say none. We don't want it to show anything. Um, so let's update the form and we can preview it again. So to see what changes were made, I'm not sure if I did it. There we go. Click on preview. Now you see gather feedback from DCL group and enter name, email, click next. Notice the next page is empty. And of course, if you put no name or email, you will get an alert. You can also customize those, those alerts under your um, different settings, under form settings. But what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of description here to explain what people need to do. It's going to be short and sweet. And there's two places you could add text to your form. One is on the form itself, and two is on the page where you're going to be displaying the form. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. Pages, we're going to go to add a new page. We open it in a new tab, and it's right over here. We're going to say, thank you for attending the workshop. Okay, so I've added some text here, and now I want to add the form to WordPress. I'm just going to click on the Add Form button, which is, you know, added once you install and activate Gravity Forms. Click on that, and we're going to select the form from the ones that we were already created. And there's a very top one, .com Lifestyle Workshop Feedback. And this is where you can select some of the extra options. You can say Display the form title, Display in form description, and Enable Ajax. What enable Ajax means is that when somebody submits the form, nothing else around the form will change. They will stay on the same page, everything should work, and the only thing that changes is the form itself. If there's a next page, it should refresh just that box. If it's the final form, it should just refresh that box to say thank you for completing the form, or whatever you decided to say. So we're going to do all three for now, just to show you how it works, and we're going to click on uh, insert. Now we have a new uh, page here. We're going to name this .com lifestyle 
feedback. Okay. And we can save, and then we're just gonna do a preview. We're not gonna publish it, but for our purposes, it will be good enough. We're gonna click on preview over here. And now you see there's a form that's starting to t have shape here. Uh, there's the title, this is the title of the page, and this is the text we typed. But remember that we checked in all those three boxes at the beginning when we inserted the form. We said show the title of the form and show the description. So as I said earlier, you have two places to put text. One is the title of the form itself and the description of the form itself. And the other one is the title and the text of the page where you're going to be displaying the form. Ultimately, when I put this in here, I'm going to remove the text from the form. So I will go back here and I'm going to change the name. So I'm not going to say any name here. The easiest way to do it is to simply delete that whole line that got inserted and insert it again with your new settings. So we're just going to say, don't do any of that. Uh, just display nothing, just the form. So this will just do the form. If we insert it, notice how this, this changed. You can rewind this uh, about 30 seconds and look at the difference. This is what tells Gravity Forms not to show that stuff. We'll say, uh, click on the save draft. Look at the preview again, and we'll see what it looks like. So, now all that we have is the text and the description that we typed in ourselves or you know into the text here. So you decide where you want to maintain this. I prefer to do it on the pages so I don't have to keep going back to the forms to edit them. But let's continue to add a add the other fields. Oh, well let's test it. So here we have uh, first first uh, selector. Actually let's edit this so we have something to work with when we go back. Just like we edited the name field to go from two fields to one, every field has advanced settings that you can go into and configure to your liking. In this case, we're going to click on the arrow down and give this options some names. Instead of saying untitle, we're going to say workshop name. Because I do workshops for people or for our group, that's what I want to put in here. And the first one that we did, latest one that we did was OIO Publisher. How to run ads with OIO Publisher. Okay, second choice would be how to monetize your blog. And then this one would be Okay, so I have those three workshops going on right now. And so I made them options here. If, I, if you need to add more than three, then you just simply add another one, and another one, and another one. Remember, we're doing a drop-down box. So this will show up as a menu that you click, something drops down, and then you pick the one that you want. I'll show you in a minute. Here you're gonna say something like, please select the workshop you are providing feedback for. We need to say that this is a required field and then um, we're going to ask them to tell us that what is the feedback. This is a paragraph form that we inserted er earlier and it's the one that's over here. So we're just going to ask him to give us a feedback. So what we've done so far is we added a description, a paragraph, and we also added a limit of characters. You don't want to have, you know, an entire, very, you know, a super long paragraph for this kind of case, you can determine how long you want to make it. And we're going to make it required. 
we're going to update the form and then we're going to go back and look at this form and go through it remember we have to refresh this because we've updated the form right and let's go through it and complete it see how it looks like see what it looks like and what we can do about it <clears throat> oscar then we have my email and then we're going to do next and see what happens now here we go workshop name how to run ads with oio publisher or they can select another one and how to integrate optin monster whichever one it is oio publisher and then they can type in this workshop was great and that is how you create a two page or multiple page form for gravity forms to collect some survey once we hit submit i'll show you how you would review that and it's very simple i already received the email i haven't even changed any of the settings and i know it's working already um, if we go to forms and we go to entries in your gravity forms then we can look at where that form is coming in or that new entry and you see it right here the very first one or the most recent one will show on this page otherwise you can just select the form from here and then you'll see that so we'll select the form the page should reload and then you'll see the feedback here now you can do a couple of things you can select this and you can do recent notifications or print them but what we're going to do is take a look see what we have so here you see it's a form pretty straightforward uh, there's some technical I you know technical information here but uh, you see the name the email address which workshop they selected and then the feedback then you could add a note thank you thank you for the feedback etc and then you type it in you add the note here and then you can also email that person and say thank you for your feedback they will receive this message here and you'll have a record of sending them that message which is pretty cool after that if they reply they should your email should receive that in your normal inbox if you use the proper email address so um, that concludes how to create a form with multiple pages and in another lesson I'll show you how to customize all the confirmations notifications and what's really cool is that you can actually integrate a Weber to a form and I cover that in my email marketing course it's free if you go to poppydaddy.com or look in the description below in the video you can go and sign up for the email marketing course uh, one of the lessons right there that's all ready to go is how to integrate Gravity Forms with AWeber. Remember, the email marketing course is free. You can go take it right now. So, um, update. And I'll talk to you guys later. I'm done. Bye.